When the war in Ukraine started, videos of strange explosions of Russian tanks began to appear on social networks. They seem to explode from the inside, flashing like fireworks. Often the explosion is so strong that the tank is beheaded and the turret flies dozens of meters in the air. We're getting so much video of these tank losses. Uh, it's really very illustrative of, of what's happening in ways that was just invisible in other wars. The turret of a Russian tank together with its gun weighs about 12 tons, but it flies off like the cork of a champagne bottle. On some occasions, they have ended up sleeping comfortably in a room on the second floor of an apartment building. Other times, just when the turret returns and lands on the asphalt, it crushes like jelly. Ukraine has become a graveyard of Russian tanks blown to smithereens. But what happens to Russian tanks that explode like this? These explosions happen for two reasons. First, Russian tanks have several weaknesses, as they were designed more than 50 years ago for another type of conflict. Secondly, this happens when the tanks are exposed to modern weapons that were specially designed to exploit these vulnerabilities, like the Javelin or Enlaw anti-tank missiles. When today's Russian tanks were designed by the Soviet Union in the late 1960s, their design was focused on making them small and light. The smaller a tank is, the fewer materials needed to build it, the fewer logistics needed to support it, and the smaller bridges it can cross. All of this was key to the Soviet plan to invade Western Europe, flooding it with tanks. So the first thing the Soviets did to rebuild smaller tanks was to remove one crew member. Among the crew roles, driver, commander, gunner, and loader, the latter is the easiest to automate. So in Russian tanks, they eliminated the human loader and replaced it with an automatic loader. This automatic loader reduces the space needed inside the turret, as the rounds are not manipulated. It makes the turret smaller and contributes to a much lower profile that allows the tank to take cover and go unnoticed more easily. But this design feature of Russian tanks became a vulnerability. Most of the ammunition for this autoloader is stored in the carousel, a sort of metal basket under the gunner. The rest of the ammunition is often stored in nooks and crannies located inside the tank. There are about 40 rounds of ammunition stored inside the tank in the same space as its crew. So, all you have to do to blow up a Russian tank like this is to accurately shoot the explosive material located inside the crew compartment and set it on fire. Once the fire intensifies and the temperature rises, the ammunition scattered around the tank and in the carousel will quickly ignite, setting off a chain reaction that explodes the tank and ejects the turret. The force of the explosion will depend on the number of shells stored and scattered inside the tank. Watch this video. A Russian T-72B3 tank was hit by a Javelin missile in the Donetsk region. The explosion threw the turret more than 50 meters into the air. There were probably a lot of shells in the ammunition carousel at the time of the attack. Check out some more Russian tank explosions. Russian tank crew members know the danger they are in. Therefore, they try to get out of the tank at the slightest ignition and run as far away from it as possible. In this case, the crewman managed to get out of the tank and ran away. He knows what will happen next, and just a few seconds later, the tank explodes. American Abrams tanks have avoided this design. Ammunition storage on Abrams is located at the rear of the turret, separated from the crew compartment by an armored door. This is how the armored door separating the shell storage from the crew works. And you can see how a crewman does the job rather than an auto loader. In addition, the Abrams is equipped with blowout panels so that if the ammunition explodes, the panels fly out so that the explosion goes out the top instead of entering the closed crew compartment. Check out this video of an Abrams ammunition exploding when hit by an anti-tank missile. As shocking as the video is, the crew usually survives without serious injury when this happens. Crew survivability has long been a priority on US tanks, unlike Russian tanks. Russian tank design prioritizes the rate of fire, firepower, low profile, high speed, and maneuverability over crew survivability. For Western countries, a person is a primary value, and that is why tank designs are so different. As in Western tank design, the priority is crew survivability. Generally, the top of the tank turret has thinner armor, making it a more vulnerable area. If the tank is hit there, the explosive inside can ignite and set off a chain reaction that could destroy it. The American Javelin missile, in its top attack mode, is specifically designed to attack the top of tanks. In this attack mode, the missile is fired at an angle of 18 degrees and reaches a speed of 190 meters per second. 
When it reaches an altitude of 150 meters, it remains at that altitude as it heads toward the target and plummets over it, hitting it almost vertically in its most vulnerable and least protected part, blowing it apart. This is very clearly visible in the frames of these videos. The missile hits the top of the tank and there is an instantaneous explosion and detonation of the ammunition stored inside, causing the turret to be thrown with great force into the air. In this case, the tank crew will not even have time to understand what happened to them. The British anti-tank system NLAW and its overfly top attack mode work similarly, attacking the top of tanks. The missile flies one meter above the tank and the rocket sensor detonates the warhead above the tank roof. The function is effective from as little as 20 meters, making it ideal for close-range combat in urban areas, even when the tank is covered. If a tank is concealed, but with a hatch or antenna visible, the NLAW operator simply aims at the visible part of the tank and the missile does the rest of the job. The Russians tried to protect their tanks by welding a special metal grid on the tanks in the hope that this would help counter attacks, but in practice, it has proved useless against the Javelin and NLAW systems. Moreover, the Javelin has an additional feature that makes it even more lethal to Russian tanks. If, for some reason, it cannot attack the top of the tank, that is not a problem for the Javelin. While Russian tanks in general do not have very thick armor, they are reinforced in their protection by explosive reactive armors. These are the small bricks seen on the sides and top of many tanks and are a type of protection that will explode when hit by an enemy shell, reducing the damage to the vehicle being protected. But Javelins use tandem charges, which are very effective against reactive armors. The first charge is weak and pierces or detonates the reactive armor, opening the way for the second charge. This second charge of the same shell strikes the same place in the tank where the first explosion occurred and the reactive armor has been damaged. Since the normal armor is usually the only remaining defense, the main charge, which is the second detonation, can penetrate the unprotected armor. It is also possible to blow Russian tanks apart using standard grenades appropriately. The war in Ukraine has led to creativity on the part of the Ukrainians being put to the service of their country's defense. They have learned to launch grenades from small commercial drones with great precision. If the hatch of the tank is open and the grenade hits just the inside of the tank, it starts a fire that quickly leads to a chain detonation of ammunition. Soldiers often leave tanks with open hatches on the battlefield, fearing that they will not be able to open them in case they are attacked. And on other occasions, the attacked tanks were simply parked or abandoned. And in some cases, as you can see in these shots, entire columns of tanks were destroyed. And this is no coincidence. Tanks are one of the many mistakes the Russians have made in their invasion of Ukraine. Many thought in the early days of the invasion that the Russians were going to defeat the Ukrainians easily. But not only were the Ukrainians underestimated, but the Russians were also overestimated. And tanks are one of the main reasons why the Russians have been so weak in their ground battle with Ukraine. The Russians will have to quickly upgrade their tanks with better defenses that can counter the modern anti-tank weapons used by the West. But beyond these technical problems, the Russians had tactical problems with the use of their tanks. The Russians employed the tanks in a way that Western observers said was simply wrong. The results are there for all to see. What for many was going to be a quick victory for Russia has turned into a real problem for Russia, which cannot achieve victory against a supposedly weaker enemy. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, be sure to watch the next one.